she could. I didn't have a chest pain. I had to just about to go. This time, all of a sudden, I was in the pain. I looked at that. I could see the purple. It was
share with you and, and those who are with us now on, on the internet, out there online. Great to have everybody here today. And as we prepare for another meaningful and special time together in the spirit of our Lord, I certainly would encourage you to remember that um, in the, the bulletin insert, several things going on. Of course, session members were meeting after church. Today is our two cents a meal offering. If you would like to give something toward that hunger related ministry, you're welcome to do so. This should be a familiar thing to you. Um, you can just leave uh, a gift if you wish in one of the offering plates um, and anything is helpful. And the whole point of that too, it's just, it's remarkable how just simply a few cents for every meal that we eat can actually do a lot of good. tremendous amount across our area and around the world. Um, another, uh, of course, our other mission project right now is our fish, our Lenten fish project, the fish banks. Um, if you've not already picked one up and wish to, they are ready and willing. Uh, it's not often the fish want to be caught, right? Uh, walk out there and catch your fish. It, it's waiting for you. Um, and then, yes, just bring it back anytime. Good. And like you said, we, like uh, there are ministries identified, suggested ones for you there in the in the, in the insert. Um, also, our Easter Lily insert is in there as well. Uh, sorry for the um, misunderstanding on some of those. The amounts were different for how much the lilies are. We're not trying to make you guess. It's not a you know, Site, I guess, um, but uh, everybody should have the correct inserts now and the prices should be correct on there uh, if you'd like to give lilies uh, for later in this season. And also uh, a note that our affirmation of faith, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, we're doing an, a scriptural affirmation of faith from Colossians. Um, it will So that's all I have for announcements. Are, are there any other announcements of which we need to be aware? I think that's it. Okay, friends, well, let's rejoice today in the presence of God as the people of God. Let us rejoice today in the grace, the love, the compassion, the faithfulness of our Lord. Let us rejoice together as people in Christ here and now.
Let us join together as the Spirit of our Lord leads us into this time of worship together. Friends, join with me in our call to worship printed in the bulletin. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I fear? me to devour my flesh. My adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, I fear war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. To the will of my risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Our first hymn, friends, 442, just as I am without one plea. Truly, the Lamb of God does invite us to come, 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 come as we are, to find in our Lord refuge and welcome, safety and forgiveness. Come and find the grace of God displayed in a banquet of beauty. So we offer ourselves, friends, to this goodness of God, to God's steadfast love, we, we approach God as we are and offer to God who we are. Join with me in our prayer of confessions as we make this statement in boldness and humility. Join. We are here to follow in the steps of our Lord. And often falter. burdens prevent us from loving our neighbor as we ought 
Forgive our heavenly hearts, merciful God. Lift our faces to see your beauty in this moment. Take away our delusions of idolatry and self-love. Take away our contentious spirits and give us the peace and comfort that we need to live in loving community with all of your children. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yes, friends, the Lamb of God welcomes us and has done his job for us. We are to express our confidence in the Lord. Proclaim this to The Lamb of God has come to take away the sins of the world. We walk with Him in His life and love. We walk with Him in the freedom of the cross. Thanks be to God. to invite you to join with me in prayer. Thank you, O precious to us. You, the Lamb who was slain and glorified before the throne of God, you, we invite you now into this time of conversation, this time of reflection, this time of growth, this time of hearing and Hear us. Hear us as your children. Hear us as your brothers and sisters. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Our first lesson, let's see, our first lesson today is Acts chapter 9. This is um, after Saul had his... Uh, his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus and the difficult days of him understanding what was going on and what was true and how it was, how he was so wrong before. But join with me now in Acts chapter 9, uh, the, la the second half of verse 19 through verse 30. For several days, Paul was in was with the disciples in Damascus and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue saying he is the son of God all who heard him were amazed and said is this not the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked his name and has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests Saul, this of course Paul, became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. After some time had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night so they might kill him, but his disciples took him by night and led him down through an opening of the wall, lowering him in a basket. When he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe him. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord who had spoken to him, 
and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. The word of the Lord, my friends. All right, friends, join with me now back to Genesis as we continue our continuing with Jacob today, Genesis 31, the first five verses is our first section here. Now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying, Jacob has taken all that was our father's. He has gained all his wealth 
from what belonged to our father. And Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him as favorably as he did before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your ancestors and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was, and he said to them, I see that your father does not regard me as favorably as he did before, but the God of my father has been with me. Now over to chapter 32, where they go on that journey, beginning at verse 3. Jacob sent messengers before him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, instructing them, Thus you shall say to my lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob, I have lived with Laban as an alien and stayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male and female slaves, and I have sent to tell my lord in order that I may find favor in your sight. The messengers returned to Jacob saying, we came to your brother Esau and he is coming to meet you and 400 men are with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies thinking, well, if Esau comes to the one company and destroys it, then the company that is left will escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant for with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I'm afraid of him. He may come and kill us all, the mothers with the children. Yet you have said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. Try to imagine for a moment that you are Vladimir Zelensky, the president of Ukraine. At least he was president last time I heard. Uh, it seems like that could change at any time. But if you were President Zelensky, the first thing you'd probably have to do once you figure out how to spell your name is to face the unbelievable and incredible and terrifying task of leading your nation and the remaining people each day into another day of fighting for your life. Every waking moment and probably most of the sleeping ones too would be consumed with how to get Putin to change his mind about the invasion. Just think about that. That one objective, is his chief aim more than anything else right now? How can he get Putin to change course and stop? Everything else aims there. That's when I guess the futility hits and hurts because as we know, you cannot make anyone else do anything. Our future is out there. It's coming toward us no matter how hard we try to make it happen or prevent it from happening. The forces at work are so far beyond our control and yet we can try to look into the future with faith and to push as much as we possibly can what is good and what is right 
Sometimes, in some places, people are willing even to give their lives to push for what is right. Sometimes, in some places, sacrifice leads to change. That's exactly the spot that Jacob finds himself in today's text. This impossible, terrible, unavoidable situation that might well spell the end the further that he traveled. It's fascinating to me how life can place us in these desperate situations in full view of what might be coming. We might even think we know with relative certainty what will happen. But ultimately, so much is beyond the control of any of us. We, therefore, face the future with every virtue that we can muster and pray to God that things work out well enough. We might try as hard as we possibly can for what we believe is right, but ultimately we must also trust in God to handle a future too big for us. Jacob is as terrified as he can be. His brother Esau has literally wanted to kill him ever since Jacob left home 20 years before. Jacob, however, is compelled to go back home because he can't stay any longer and God told him to go. But, 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 when Jacob hears from his messengers that Esau is coming to meet him with a small army of men, this all looks like it's going to go in one very bad direction. Jacob divides up his household in case Esau attacks so that at least some of them might get away and live. Things change when we leave home for a while. Life moves on, people move on, things happen that change us. We move in different directions once we literally move in different directions. We expect this to happen when people go off to college or start a new job or just go somewhere different in life. I found this in the beginning years of my marriage when my relationship with my college friends changed without me even being aware. And perhaps the most dramatic and troubling way that is happening right now in Ukraine with the millions of people who've already fled the country, even if they come back in a few weeks, they will find things different. Have remained, have become prisoners to Russian terror, soldiers of insurgency, and people hardened by this senseless war. When and if those who are ever who are left are ever reunited with family or friends or neighbors who stayed, they will have a lot of sharing and growing to do before they can re-find themselves. But this is also where God likes to work. In our hope. In what is about to happen. In our places of greatest need. That is where God is most actively at work. In our conflicts is where there is most opportunity for growth. Out of the brokenness of our history, God forges new things of promise. Throughout history, God's great hand for righteous change has come in the most difficult of conflicts. This has been a reoccurring theme in our American experience of the needed reconciliation of the races and our successes and failures to be one people 
made in God's image. As long as we continue to struggle to value, truly value, the lives of those who do not look like us, God will be meeting our resistance to find home together with openings for something better. In fact, I believe this is the greatest ministry we can have as American Christians in the 21st century. This is the most powerful expression of God's kingdom in the world today. How can we truly be one people in Christ Jesus our Lord? Looking past our differences, especially the senseless, meaningless, and abhorrent differences we have created in race. If we could simply honor God's love for us all, but we could change the world. If we could truly recognize our sisters and brothers of all colors, so much that is wrong in our society could be helped. That is our future. That is our home. That is there. That is out there for us as God's children. If we're willing to walk into that future, even when it is scary. Jacob took each step in faith as he made that long trek back to his family and his brother. That Jacob, who left a trickster and a con artist, was returning as the next father of God's people. But before he could realize that destiny, he had to give away his past to walk into the future and return home. He had to become someone new. The passage that we skipped here was the famous story about his wrestling with God. All night he wrestled with this divine being until he received a blessing and a permanent injury. He was renamed Israel as part of this blessing. The entire nation and the people takes its name from this one act. Jacob's identity was radically changed. And he was finally prepared to come home through that struggle. Paul also had to change before he came home. God pushed him into that change, even though it was the hardest thing Paul had ever done. He met resistance, fear, hostility, even from God's people, especially from God's people. Paul proved himself, however, by not giving up, but by following God into that journey home. He trusted the future as God was giving it. I deeply wish everyone's future would work out as we wish it would. I deeply wish that we could come together and see the world God wants. I deeply wish that everyone could, could come home and be welcomed. Sadly, the journey does not work that way for all of us. Many, many, too many Ukrainians will never see their homes, but will have to establish new ones. Of course, Putin is doing his level best to leave Ukraine a flat wasteland if he cannot have it, no one will. But our sisters and brothers over there, scattered across Europe and even in Russia, the terribly oppressed and suffering people of God over there will have a future. They will find a home in our God, even if the journey changes them forever. Jacob kept marching on to meet Esau. When he finally saw his brother, something pretty amazing happened. 
Genesis 33, the first four verses. Now Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming and 400 men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maids. He put the maids with their children in the front and Leah with her children and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on ahead of them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell upon his neck and kissed him and they wept. Even in the last moments, Jacob was preparing for the worst. But he kept going as God led him. When Esau ran to him and grabbed him, it was in love. There was nothing easy about the road that brought them back together. But God brought them to a new place, a new way to be family to a new home. We have no hope for tomorrow, but in the Lord our God. This world seems to be more and more at a breaking point. We've lost a greater sense of our shared home if we ever truly had it. I would argue that our vision of our success has always been through rose-colored glasses. The future is bearing down on us. But we will not give up. We will not give in. We will resist the evil of this world and the brokenness of our lives in the forgiveness, the compassion, the reconciliation, and the joy of our Savior. It is my prayer that as we make our way, we do so with honesty, humility, and the recognition that God is working something good right here between us and our neighbor. We might have to change more than we want to embrace the future, but if we are open to finding space in God's home, we will know new life in the confidence of our Lord. There is hope for us and for all of God's children who find themselves struggling right now. To God be the glory. Amen. And our confidence to our faith and the response to the Word of God I invite you to join with me in reaffirming our faith using this passage from Colossians chapter 1, printed in the bulletin insert. Together, and sharing our faith through these words of Scripture. <clears throat> Friends, what do you believe? Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have And through him, God was pleased to reconcile all things to himself, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen and amen. Our hymn friends, 182, I heard the voice of Jesus say,
be seated. Turn into our time of shared prayer. Concerns, the joys, whatever it is on our, on our heart that we bring with us today, I would certainly encourage you to hold in your hearts all those who continue on our prayer list um, a couple of special situations. Um, our brother in the Lord, Mike McCoy, uh, was at the hospital some this week. Uh, dealing with illness and uh, his home, um, but certainly keep him in your prayers uh, as he continues to recover. Also, uh, it came to my attention that um, Taylor Emerson's grandmother had died back in December, but her service is coming up in the coming weeks. Um, uh, Sue Bledsoe is her name. Prayers. Uh, as they continue to feel this time of loss together. Others, we need to remember specifically and especially in this, in this day. All right, friends, let us share in the goodness of God as people of faith. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy one. Oh God, in this space, give us a respite. Give us a few moments where we can just entrust ourselves to you with, with complete honesty. Help us to find here that space where we can just give ourselves to you and all that we have. Comfort us, receive us, lavish that love in such a way that we can grow and know that you are here with us in a powerful way. You are the one who has made all of this through Jesus Christ. You are the one who has given us all of this, has brought us here for this day, has made our own journeys come together here in this time. For that, we are grateful for that care, that support, for that guidance that has carried us through all of our days. It would be something to add up the days of all of our lives and put them into one big number. But that number would be entirely informed by your love, your providence, your direction, your guidance. As we rejoice in that gift, the opportunities that we've known, the ways we have been challenged, the ways that we have grown, even our homes. You have continued to provide us a home in your heart wherever we may be and you have brought us back together in new expressions of connections. You have brought us together people who've been here for many, many years and people who've been here for just a short time. But still, you have brought us together to be one family in faith and given us a hope in you. We ask for that hope, that future, to extend out through, beyond this church, beyond this church family, and fold this community <coughs> in your life and love as it seeks, as it searches, as it looks for the best way to be community. <coughs> 